Welcome back to Retail Therapy. My name is Will DeFreeze. Today in the studio, we have the recently married Barrett Dudley. Barrett, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. That's right. Um, nothing, nothing was ever quite the same. Uh, every episode, you know, from, from here on out, it's just going to hit, it's just going to hit different mm-hmm. because, um, I'm wearing a new little piece of jewelry here. I actually think that yeah, ring, so. I, it's not on my in-out list for today, but I think it could be, is just male rings. Uh-huh. But I'm not talking like wedding rings, obviously. But yeah, like, yeah, yeah, you could collect a few more on there. I think so. Yeah, yeah, I, th- I think so. Uh, wearing this ring, the, the, the ease with which I adapted to having this ring on my finger, it did, it, it opened the door, I think, to becoming a, a, a multi-ring wearer. Okay. I would say. Yeah. okay. Yeah, it did, it did. Well, as as you can see, uh, I I am not yeah. currently wearing mine, as I don't wear mine all that often, unless I'm going out or you know going to be in front of people. Yeah. So what? Yeah. What's what is your like? Where do you keep your ring? Do you have like a cute little ring dish on your on your nightstand? No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. Um, okay. I, all right. I actually uh, I usually just put it on my bedside table and it just kind of right. sits there. And yeah. the only person that ever moves it is my son, who brings it to me and puts it on my finger every time. <laughs> <laughs> Which is fine. Yeah. Uh, but yes, uh, when we were in Tennessee and we did our pottery class, I inadvertently made a little ring dish when I was trying to make a bowl. So now I have a homemade. Oh, right. Okay. Well, that's that's right. That's that's and, that's fresh. But yeah, um, my my rule for myself is that if I'm going out and I'm going to like a dinner or if mm-hmm. I'm going to be out doing something, I always have it on. Okay. But I also don't love wearing it like in bed, so I usually take it off and put it on my bedside yeah, table. Yeah, I do. I don't. I've not been sleeping in it. Yeah, it's, so it's it's it is finding itself on the on the nightstand most nights. Yeah, um, it also might be slightly too loose. So I I'm I'm a little concerned about um, you know how quickly I lose this thing. But I lost mine last week. <laughs> um, I put it on my bedside table. Did not know where it was. Searched everywhere. I alerted all the authorities besides one that I had lost my wedding ring. So if anyone could you know keep keep an eye out. And uh, the one person who I didn't want to find out that I lost it, she's the one who found it. Uh-huh, and so right. uh, it was. It was fine. Yeah. It was yeah. fine. Well, I'm glad it was recovered. You yeah. Know, that's 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 yeah. the important thing. Well, I was very happy with your tuxedo performance at your uh oh, at thank your you. wedding. Thank you. I was very yeah. happy with yeah. everything at the wedding, honestly. The, from the playlist, we got bonus uh, saxophone vibes on the dance floor, which yeah. is never yeah. something I turned down. You didn't tell anyone about the the, the live saxophone player or really the uh, late night espresso martini bar. No, no. I, th- those were things that we wanted to have as like little, you know, surprises. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, among others were like the dogs walking the aisle. That was nice. The, uh, the, the, the matchbooks with the, with the line drawings, which believe me when I tell you that, yes, I did pull up the Randy Get Ready, like Amelie Andor and Drake's caricatures yeah. as the, as the inspo for those. You know, I've always that, wanted to do one for that, that, Sunday the, Scaries or Retail that's Therapy. That's the type of vibe that I wanted. Um, and, uh, and for those, uh, and then yeah, the espresso martinis and the, uh, the live saxophonist accompanying the DJ for, uh, for the first nominally hour of the, of the dance party. And, and I yeah, know- so that, th- those were all fun little, like, ah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's, you know, we wanted people to be doing the, that's a nice touch thing. Yeah. It was a nice touch also. I know you're from Houston, you had the wedding in Austin, but you still managed to fit in, still tip and play in, uh, during the ceremony, which was a really, really nice thing. That's right. Yeah, uh, that that was um, totally planned. Yeah, just uh, handed a dude that was uh, sit, sitting outside on South Congress. He was in a donk, uh, you know, big old, big old, uh, what are those, the choppers on blades? I, I think yeah. you might be asking the wrong source here. <laughs> I said, just roll by real slow, do, playing a chopped and screwed version of still tipping while uh, while I'm trying to uh, say my vows. Yes, it, was yeah. be- it was a beautiful moment. Here's a little. Uh, we had the the other nice. The, the other thing that we were really happy with um, is uh, kind of like as an alternative to a photo booth, we had uh, Instax cameras okay. on all of the tables. Yep, and then an envelope to to drop the uh, the results in. I think some people did kind of lift theirs, and that's okay. We got we got we got enough, and uh, pretty soon, you know, you might be finding yourself with a little digitized version to to share on. Uh, so you're saying on that your, on your social, if we attempted to steal the Polaroid ourselves. Uh, we were being shamed. I attempted to steal. I attempted to steal this one, this very one you have on the screen. Uh, I attempted to steal it, and somebody like walked over and said, "No, put that in the envelope." And I was like, I was so shocked by the aggressive nature of being told to put it in the envelope that I simply knew, like, I if you, they might have like a metal detector on the way out that's yeah, like seeing yeah. if you have these on you. Yeah. So um, excited to uh, to to share those. Um, Another obvious thing that we had been, had in the works for for many months in advance that we were really planning is is, is for producer Randy to to juby slide mm-hmm. for everybody. Mm-hmm. So that was a nice little performance that 
that we had going. Glad I could um, help. Yeah, yeah. You're, no, of course it was. It was. It was big. It was. Uh, it was big for everybody. Um, so. So yeah, this was uh, it was it was great. The um, the full rig was the suit supply custom, which overall I I thought like like I loved the way it fit and 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 how it all shook out. I'm a little I will I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna throw a little salt at suit supply. Okay, for the way that the that the that the pickup and the final alterations were handled. Oh yeah. Um, you just, it just it left me with a a, a kind of sour taste in my mouth because I went in and I got fitted by a, by by a guy like a like a you know a sales rep yeah, a, yeah. an associate there who I really liked who I thought understood exactly what I was going for he's the one that helped me fit the suit and like dialed it all in and like took care of of everything there mm -hmm. and then uh, like I tried to make two different appointments with him to come in and pick up the suit. And like one time he can't, they, they, they canceled because he wasn't even working that day that I made the appointment. And then the second time he was like, Hey, just hang out for 15 minutes. My other appointment is running long. And then like two minutes later, some other dude swooped in was like, here's your suit, try it on. And I like was kind of trying to talk about some things that, yeah, I, that yeah. I had already talked about with the first guy. And he was, and the, the second guy, he didn't know what the hell I was talking about. So he was like, no, that's, that's fine. This Don't is worry what, about this that. This is like handing off a haircut. Like, it's, yeah. no, no, you can't, you can't do a mid tailoring handoff. And so I know that this is like, I'm probably like, like these guys are sales reps. They are going to prioritize making the sales over like finishing ones that they've already, that where that's already been paid for, right? But like, you, you could you could round out that experience a little bit better. I'm I'm actually checking Dumois right now, and it says <laughs> local Austin <laughs> podcaster fuming at suit supply. Um, but just you know, like finish finish it up, man. Finish the job. Yeah. So I basically I never saw this guy again. Was it basically. the dude with the glasses? No, oh, he okay. was one of the ones that 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 helped me okay. wrap, wrap it all okay. up. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, that, that, that's my, that was my only complaint. Um, my shirt, I went with, uh, that's like the one people were very kind of surprised. I had multiple people come up, come up to me and say that they were surprised I had gone so traditional. They thought either that I'd go like midnight Navy or a little bit, or do something more interesting than, than the very classic black. The one thing that was like not noticeable to the, to the naked eye is I, I went with this, um, with a, with a fly front shirt from Eton, um, that was warm white. Instead of okay. solid white, I like that, and I just thought that gave it like it kind of like it 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 mirrored the the color of Laura's wedding dress a little mm -hmm. bit better. It mm -hmm. didn't look so crisp, and I thought it was a nice way to just like just have a, a this slightly different kind of elevation. I like that. Uh, yeah, switching from a shirt that requires studs to a shirt that is flat front for me has mm -hmm. changed everything about how I operate when it ter in terms of getting ready. Yeah, it makes things so much more straightforward. I personally like how it looks on me more. Then I like the other things, and it's just it, it has really made my life easier. But if we have time today, I want to go into some more black tie okay. stuff in a little sure. in a little bit. Before we go into today's episode, some announcements. Our YouTube channel is back, so go check that out. Uh, YouTube.com slash Sunday Scaries Podcast. Go subscribe there. We put all the episodes up. Barrett's a maestro on the uh, the old screen over here. We also have retail.pod on Instagram. Go follow. Uh, I will commit to keeping up on my listener companions on Substack. I'm sorry that I've been so bad about it lately. It's been a busy time with Barrett getting married and everything. Uh, it has, yeah. yeah. And we did Apologies. miss last week's episode. Barrett was down with a cold. Uh, we were up against it. And it was like, you know what? Barrett, you're still on You're still on your little mini moon. Yeah, let's yeah, let's let yourself enjoy yourself. Yeah. But today's episode, oh, and a major announcement, uh, Retail Therapy Candles back in stock. Mm. So if you want to go get one, they are fully in stock right now. So I have no no qualms about promoting that. You will be able to get one if you go there right now, velabox.com slash Sunday Scaries. Again, velabox.com slash Sunday Scaries. You have to think that if you bought on the original drop, Probably time to re up. Probably is. I gotta imagine that you're at the bottom of that uh, that that ceramic. We have been burning this one in the studio for such a long time, and I think it's over the sixty hours that we promised out of these yeah. things, or forty hours. I forget. Somewhere up there. Yeah, it's in the tens. We should bump that down to like thirty hours, just so people blow have to, people's yeah, minds. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. feels good to under <laughs> or uh, under under promise and over deliver. <laughs> Speaking of uh, over-delivering, let's hear from our friends over at Shopify. When we started podcasting, an online store was the furthest th furthest thing from our mind, but now. We're selling stuff. 
Got some Sunday Scaries boxer shorts dropping in the near future. You got to go check those out. And it's so easy all because we use Shopify. If you're buying something from us, know that it's going through Shopify. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business from your launcher online shop stage to the first real life store stage all the way to the did we just hit a million order stage? Shopify is there to help you grow. So whether you're selling scented candles to offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell everywhere with their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS system, wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify has you covered. Shopify is so easy to use. It's so easy to update your products. It's so easy to use their plugins, which are just insanely vast. They have so many different ones, but I have no coding experience and I can go in, I can edit the website, I can make it look good and I can make it as advanced or dumbed down as I want to. They power over 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. and they're global. They're a global force behind Allbirds, Rothies, and Brooklinen, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Sign up for a one dollar per month trial at Shopify.com/scaries. All lowercase. Go to Shopify.com/scaries now to grow your business, no matter what stage you're in. Again, that's Shopify.com/scaries. I think this is long overdue, Barrett. It's time for some spring. In and out. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm not going to say that it's long overdue. I mean, we're not even in spring. Yet, no, no, right? we're, it's, it's long overdue. <laughs> it's March. It's March. No, we... Uh, yeah, yeah. This, it, it's, I mean, it's time. It's time. There's, there's no doubt about that. I feel so. less pressure in the spring than I do at the end of the year. I feel like at the well, end right, of the year, we need right. to encompass a lot. Yeah. I feel like in the spring, we can get a little more loose with it. A little more loose, maybe not quite as many. This is really, this is, this is really just kind of like a check-in. Maybe, maybe add some things and, and take away some things. Um, I was looking back at our, at our last list. So I'm pulling those up right now because I want to see if there's okay. anything from there that sticks out for you yeah. that you're like, okay, crush that. Or like, oh, I was totally off on that. Um, let me see. Okay. I've got our lists up. Uh, I actually have a couple that I've isolated that I think were great calls for me. And then I have one that was a terrible call from me. Okay. Give me a sec. Let me pull these up on the screen for okay. our, for our YouTube watchers. Um, this it's, was, this was our year end in and out, right? Yeah. It's a, yeah. it's a, okay. it's the pinned post on our, on our That's Instagram right, right okay. now. So here we go. Here it is. Here it is. I, I feel a little bad, uh, but Boiler room sets, they're popping up more and more in my in my everywhere, in okay. my universe. I'm, I feel very, very comfortable saying that I will probably attend one in the near future, and I can't wait for it. Um, I will also say do, that- Do you have your eye on a specific boiler room set? Like, no. Are you like, you have tickets to like a Fred again set and- I and, wish I did. You know, in like Montreal or something? The, uh, I think I referenced them on a podcast recently, uh, Berlioz. I don't. I think that's how you say it. B e r l i o z. Okay. They're kind of like a yeah, jazz yeah. ensemble that does a little more like electronic stuff. Okay. They did one in Dallas that I wish I could have made, but it was on a Monday night after mm. a travel weekend for me, so I would have had to turn around that and go would to be Dallas. Tough. Yeah. 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 Uh, I will say that Matrix leather level or <laughs> Matrix level leather. Uh, I'm seeing leather everywhere, and I think I even have leather pants on my ins for this week. Uh, and what was it? I had one that I was beating myself up over. I was wrong on Navy blue being out. Okay. I said Navy yeah. blue is going to yeah. be out. And not only am I seeing more and more Navy, I'm personally wearing more and more Navy. Uh, but number 10 of my, on my out list was portrait mode. And all reports are that the young generation is just completely out on it. Yeah. So like, yeah. I'm very happy with that. Um, and I'm now scrolling past portrait mode, just straight to photo. Right. Right. Okay. Um, let's see, just, just, I'm going to pull a couple from yours just to talk about, uh, the one that you'll see echoed on mine today that you, that, that, that you're spot on with is analog. Uh, and, and I'll, I'll get to, to what I pulled out from there, uh, later. Uh, and then just to, to, to piggyback on your matrix level leather, who, who could have foreseen the, the tour de force that the Dune press tour is putting on, <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, it's 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 unprecedented the level of fits that Austin Butler, Zendaya, Timothy Chalamet, crazy. and the and Florence Pugh are like pulling off at mm -hmm. every single stop. I mean, they're getting absolutely freaky with it. Zendaya's robot fit will own a lot of yeah, real estate I, in my yes, head. Yeah, I mean, um, like, what do you think that th that fit that thing alone? The, the you know the one that she wore, obviously. Like, what do you think that would fetch at auction right now? An insane amount. An insane amount. That needs to be in a Planet Hollywood in 1994. Um, Timmy's wearing all sorts of stuff. He's doing like full Hermes kits and like God knows what else. Full leather insa insanity. Um, it's quite. It's quite a show. It's, it's amazing. Re it's really quite. A I show. really didn't and think that in 2024 we'd have mob wife and leather like you know fur coats and leather going off. Yeah. But here we are. 
Yeah, but um, all, all that to say, I do. I think that the I do think that the Dune press tour is is like amping up the the amount of leather that we're that we're seeing on our. It's it's the opposite uh, of the Madam Web press tour on our feeds. That's correct. Yeah, yeah. Um, just to to look through mine, let's see. Um, yeah, I don't, I, I don't, I don't think I have any. I don't have any comments here. I mean, brown, <laughs> brown is on every single new site right yes, now. Like, yeah, if you yeah. if you have an option to buy something on any site that we've talked about, you have the option to buy it in brown at this point. That's true. That is uh, true. Specialized groceries. Uh, I I've been making some pan sausage from a local farmer lately, and okay. I'm very happy with it. That's I'm back sick. on my meat grind, yeah. so maybe meat should be in for me. Um, the one that I'm gonna, that I'll maybe that I'll I'll call out here that I had on my in list that I'm that I'm cooling on is hidden New York. And I think shortly after I posted this, or, or, or we did this episode, a link dropped for the Hidden New York Discord feed. Mm -hmm. And so I, I jumped in there just to see what it's all about. I'm scared. You're braver than me. And it 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 it's the most obnoxious thing on the like that I've ever encountered that, as far as online clears. communities go. That yeah. clears. Yeah. Uh, the the and not just the people in it who uh, I I think are what you would have expected, but like the mods. Like I, I don't know how familiar y'all are with 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 Discord, but like it, it's like an unspoken rule that you you only utilize at like adding everyone like very sparingly, like emergencies or serious announcements yes. only, or like yes. stuff that you feel very confident everybody will want to hear about. You know, let's say like a seventy percent off sale, maybe something like that. That would that would qualify, right? Uh, or uh, an announcement that your store is closing or something like yeah. that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Uh, they, they, they just like, they mash that everyone button. Like there's no tomorrow. It's and just it's, some like, it's awful. It's some awful. marketing director at some like brand that's just like, <laughs> don't care. Like, I'm just trying to put, I'm just trying to put numbers on the board right now. Yeah, yeah pretty much. So, yep. um, I'm, I've cooled on them a little bit. The, the discord has done the opposite of what it was supposed to. It's actually made me less interested in purchasing anything from them. That yeah. clears. Yeah. That clears. So let's get into this, 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 uh, current iteration of our in and out list. I, I have fewer outs today than I've had in a really long time, but I also feel like I can justify these in a much more aggressive way. So I don't have any that I'm scared of right now. Okay. Do you want me to just pop up your whole list sure. right now? Let's, yeah. Can we pop up both of them right we now? Pop, just... We can pop up both of them. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's put them up here. I think it should be pretty straightforward. <sighs> Again, I, I don't know how confident I am in some of these, but I, I, I want to at least bring them to the table to talk them out with you. Yeah. And I, I, do you want me to start off with my first one? Uh, my first one is simply Derek Guy driven. It's tailoring as an interest, but not as just like, oh, it's cool to get things tailored now. It's always been cool to get things tailored. But I feel like more and more now, guys are actually like very interested in going to a tailor and making sure that their good stuff looks good on them. And I feel like that's not something off the rack was always something that we were all like kind of addicted to or like something we were just becoming accustomed to because everything was doing that. And and what's the word? Like just the direct to consumer nature of like everything we buy lately kind of took away from that. And I truly feel like Twitter shoving Derek Guy down our throats has made people who would normally not care about those things actually care and think about that for once. Yeah. And I'm in on it. I like that. I like it as a thing. So I do think that and 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 he certainly is is a is a piece of the the, the puzzle here as to to what something that I feel like is happening in 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 menswear and men's fashion. And so I'll I'll jump, I'll piggyback there and I'll jump to the last thing on my in list, which is just dressing nice. Yeah. Um and I the, my my view here is is heavily skewed by a lot of things, both cultural and in my own personal life. You mentioned the Derek Guy thing. Um I, I also spent the last six to eight months basically like looking at suits, tuxedos, walking in and out of suit supply and getting ready for events that required me to to wear tailoring and to, and, and to do that type of thing. But I'm also like, I, 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 I have loafers that I like now. I was always previously out. This on, is on this loafers. is a revelation that I was not aware of. What um, loafers are you into right well, now? Well, so I so I, I over the fall and winter I was able to wear like the the Doc Martin Adrian kind of green tassel loafers I that love I wore those the things. Derby. Yeah, uh, and back in May I wore those several times, and then I picked up a pair of 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 like black leather kilty loafers from Our Legacy that I wore to my rehearsal dinner that I'm that I'm very 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 much feeling, and I think like. When, when, you know, when throwing fits in 2019 or 2020 or whatever, like declared that it was a post sneaker world, mm -hmm. right. And they 
started wearing a shitload of loafers. They were doing fit. They 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 were wearing them in ways that I still don't like. Like I never was into like the mesh shorts with loafers thing or the Patagonia baggies with loafers thing. Um, and and even when they were like dressing them up a little bit, it still felt like overly vintage Ralph Lauren prep to me. Yeah. And now I just there there I I feel like we have, I feel like we have found ways to dress things up or wear tailoring, in like a freakier way. There's just like more. Like there's more things you can do with it. You don't have to be as, it doesn't, you can wear loafers, you can dress nice, you can do different things in a, in a way that now feels fashionable rather than like nostalgic for a different, for a different aesthetic. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Does that make sense? It makes sense. It makes sense. I think, I also truly think, and this is just based on living in Texas for almost nine years now. I really think that there's a divide with loafers between Southern states and Northern states. I feel like Northerners are more accustomed to wearing loafers in certain situations. It's like topsiders came down to Texas and were like kind of tipped as being this fraternity life thing. Whereas like, mo like a lot of people that just live near water are like, they don't look at it that way. It's just a normal shoe. And like, but I do think people were shoehorning in loafers with like, like I, just like things that you probably shouldn't be wearing seven hundred dollar loafers with, right? And right. that that does feel like not it, disingenuous isn't the word, but it's just like you're just you know you're doing a lot and you're okay you're accepting that you're doing a lot. Yeah. Um, I would love to bust out my loafers, my favorite ones, in every different way, but I am hesitant to just because they are so dressy that I don't you're, want you're, the you're rest Belgian of my loafers. Yeah, and yeah. I don't want to. <laughs> I, I I honestly I'll just skip to it my, one of my uh, my wish list today is a pair of loafers that I can wear more casually uh -huh. that I can beat up and not feel like and I don't want to wear my black nice loafers everywhere because I still want to be able to wear them to a black tie wedding or something I right. want them to be in my nice shoes but I also love them so much that I want to wear them in normal situations but like dressing nice I no longer really wear like the joggers and the stuff like that that I was wearing for so long into the office when I was feeling lazy and stuff. I I just really truly enjoy putting on a pair of pants more than I used yeah, to. Yeah. So 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 just to th this is the longest I think I'll talk about something is this one. So it's it's nice to get it out of the way. But like that's a that's another piece of this I think. I think we are I think as the years go on, especially now in 2024, it we just feel even more officially like out of the pandemic doldrum. Mhm. Mm and so I just I think that the, I think that the idea of looking sharper of 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 getting dressed up is becoming like more and more attractive again. Um, let me see if I can pull up. I, I, I just tried to to share this to my um, to my computer. Um, when it comes to menswear, I feel like there's such a pressure to have dope pants at this point that like it kind of naturally kills the casual like run errands around town pants that we that we were so used to wearing during a time when everyone started working from home or just like lounging around all the time. Yeah. And and like now I I think about pants more than I've ever thought about pants because of the the nature of it. Like you just mentioned the throwing fits guys, they have so many memes about pants and it kind of tipped me off like shit, like yeah, I don't really have like dope pants. I got to up my game a little bit. Uh I mean, yeah, pants are everything. We 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 talk about it on the podcast as well. Um <laughs> that did, did did you happen to to read the article from the Jonah Weiner, the Blackbird spy plane guy? I saw on, I read on, a little bit of it. New Yorker, New York Times, I can't remember which. I read a little bit of it today, uh but I did not read the whole thing, but as I was reading it, I was like, yeah, this all checks out. This is like yeah. this is a good look at pants right now. Uh, it, it was my, he, there's a, it's a quote, not even from him. He pulls a quote from like 2021. It's from a tweet, I think. And it's basically like somebody describing pants and he's like the pants that you hate, that you think look s silly and stupid. Those are the pants that you want to be wearing right now, right now. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll pull up this from, uh, this was a post that I, I, I saved from forward. Uh, and I just like this kind of epitomized, like th this just this looks fresher to me now. Like I know that this this has like the some hallmarks of 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 aesthetics and things that I haven't loved in the past, right? Like when um when we were trying to do like the JFK like knit polos three years ago, I bought one. I I I, I never wore it. It was an it was, I have I have one that I've worn twice. Um, but you also have like your 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 mesh Abercrombie or your mesh ALD one mm -hmm. that's like that 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 totally fits in with the narrative that I'm going for right now. Yeah. Um, I, 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 Bonobos just sent me two, which I love. I think they're, they're amazing. I'm excited to wear them, but the pants here again, like the pants are cool and different. They don't feel like I, I can't peg those from like 
you know, a 1993 Nautica ad, mm -hmm. nor can I say that they're like definitely Bodhi. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like they just, I just think that they're, that we're, we're finding ways to, to, to make this kind of look, to, to, to make this more elevated look feel interesting and not necessarily like we're, like we're desperate to go live in either the 19, 60s or the 1990s it feels good to not recreate uh, j crew um, catalogs from like yeah, like yeah. my high school days not and not that that's a bad thing either it just was never for me uh and then the last thing that I'll, I'll throw on top of this is obviously like as we continue to 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 get older like the the idea of like streetwear heavy fits i think becomes less attractive yeah and the and this kind of you know that this signals something different which i think is is probably something that, yeah. that that we're going for as we, um, you know, get older and are doing different things. But if you want to talk street streetwear heavy fits, uh, no, I have in my in non soccer sponsor heavy jerseys. I think yes, the lad right. core that was running through everything has now transitioned to uh, everything from bike jerseys to motocross to whatever your heart desires. I yeah, mean, we're in full Jersey territory. We, it's, yeah. we're at peak Jersey. I think it's, we're, we're coming peak, up, we're coming up close on it. peak fake sponsor. Like <laughs> yes. the, the lab core stuff, like the palace Umbro, you and I have been exchanging yeah, text messages yeah. about it. Like it just drives home that it's great. And like, I, I thought it was cyclical for a little bit, but now I'm just realizing it's not really sick. It's cyclical in that. Like we have world cups every four years and right. we have a um, renewed interest in a lot of soccer. I just think that like all these brands like Umbro that we grew up with, we want, we, I, I would think that anyone who grew up wearing Umbro shorts would love to see Umbro come back in a huge way, which they seem to be doing. Yeah. I love, I love this stuff. It like gives me the vibe of Real Madrid with Napoli with, English stuff. It's just, it's just a beautiful collaboration for me. I, I think, I, I think this is, I, I like, I feel like what's happening here is yes, jerseys and like jerseys from brands have finally broken through, mm -hmm. but I, but I, I have to believe that that is coinciding with this, this nostalgia for, for nineties football that, that I think guys like you and me that like played soccer growing up, um, remember, you yeah. know? Like this, that this this type of of kind of crew neck pullover that's got like this kind of almost awkwardly boxy fit. Yeah, like sleeves that are way too bad. Dude, I love like, it. Right, I love like it. That, yeah, like that. I love it. It's very very nostalgic I, for us. I can picture like my my soccer trainers from Bear Creek United like wearing stuff like this. I pick, um, I posted it on my Instagram, but uh, Classic Football Kits UK, which is probably the single best place to go find like retro vintage stuff. They posted a Newcastle training top that their photos of it just made it made it look so buttery. It was like just the thick material. It had it was like just well maintained over the years, and I'm sure it was four hundred dollars when they listed it on the site, but it sold out before I could even see. <laughs> yeah. But like I have just been lusting over it. Like I I have such a want. For, I, I, like I told you, I'm gonna be out of town when uh, this Umbro Palace stuff drop. I might need you to get me a crew I, neck. I, I mean, I'm gonna try to help you. I think this stuff is gonna absolutely fly. <laughs> well, find a bot. Like, find uh, a bot for me, Barrett. <laughs> All I, like I, really, I, I mean. I really quite like this insane jersey here, but uh, I'm I'm not I'm I just want this na this kind of like Argentinian colored uh, palace umbro hat. Thank you for just saying Argentina, and not like Manchester City. And I think uh, I think you you probably like this crew neck right here. I you love it all. I honestly I didn't see the white one until uh, okay. I was looking through some vibe photos on Instagram, and yeah. I fell in love with that. It's just it's just tough. Yeah, this is a good drop. This yep. is a cool drop. This yep. is um yeah peak jersey. We're 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 here, and 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 I mean. Right. That's the only, that's that's the thing. It's like there's always the yin and the yang. So like I, the fact that it's happening at the same that, that we're going full fake sponsor, fake jersey, all that soccer shirt, everything. And at the same time, it seems like loafers and like a dressier look and, and well, yeah. dressing nice. If is, I'm on the is, town is more popular than ever. It's like I, those two things coexisting sh is not actually surprising. If I'm on the town, I'm wearing loafers and some nice pants. If I'm day drinking I'm in, or lounging on my couch, I'm wearing sponsor heavy stuff as if I'm an athlete. Yeah. Do you have anything that you want to tackle? Um, I'll I'll just I'll drop right into to to my the first in that I wrote down, which is just sweaters on skin. Love it. Um, and that that it I probably could have just included that one in dressing nice, but I think it has I think it's a little bit broader, or or maybe a little bit more specific. You actually, um, point being, you don't have to be dressing nice to wear uh, to to wear a sweater or a piece of knitwear on top of nothing. Yeah. Um, so it, it, extra points, if it's like got a collar or a V-neck or has like a little bit of a looser neck, 
the the thing about this is like you, you can you can see a little bit of jewelry, you can see a little bit of skin. And if, if you're wearing something with nothing underneath, if you're wearing a piece of knitwear with nothing underneath, do you know what that means about that piece of knitwear? No, that it's just luxurious that as it's fuck. That it's ultra ultra comfortable. Yeah, yeah. Because you can't just throw on any old regular lamb's wool sweater on top of nothing, or you're just you're gonna be in you're gonna be in, in the amount town. Of, the amount of times that I put on my uh, cashmere hoodie with no shirt on underneath yeah. it is just like it's it's the most comfortable thing you can yeah. do, and I just love it. I so love it's, it. It's just a it not it's a look that I love, but it's also just a concept that I'm I mm -hmm. really like right now. Mm -hmm. I've got party tats on there. Do you know what this means? Does this this means going to a party where you get a tattoo at the party? No, right? that would be tight. That like would be so, cool. Like some dude is is at the party doing doing like stick and pokes. The way that the way that I'm looking at this is, and this is this was coined by one of my buddies. So I'm gonna hat tip him here. But it's like it's like there's no rhyme or reason to the tattoos all over you. These look like you were partying and you were like, I'm gonna go get this tattoo right now. Okay. And all so right. you just have a random littering. And I don't think this is a new thing. And but like I honestly feel like if you're not getting a tattoos in this style right now, which you should never be getting tattoos based on what's cool and what's not, because they are <laughs> extremely permanent from what I've read. Uh, but I feel like the the cool way to have tattoos is like the sporadic stuff all over your arms that is so small that in a photo you yeah, can't see yeah. what it is. And like there's only two colors that the the cool kids are having on the instagram these days just black or red yeah yeah the the young people at the at the haller brothers hq that this is the type of tattoos that they have yeah and they'll just like pop up on like a, you know on a monday with like a new like random ass thing on their calf or on the inside of their arm and it's like oh yeah i just got this weekend yeah you know just yeah. felt like yeah just oh this permanent thing yeah 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 just it's it's like very nonchalant not super thought like you know i don't have that in me no i don't either i've been either. i've been planning a tattoo for like six months and it, by planning i mean I, I emailed one person who's now moving <laughs> um you should just i think you should just go to the old the old classic the old stalwart which is just um getting like your your children's names in like a like a dead monk language yeah um da down your back like yeah. angelina jolie yeah exactly yeah. Yeah. exactly i did see a uh i think it was the cut or somebody associated with the cut talking about tramp stamps the other day okay and and how uh th they think with all the all the nostalgia from the early 2000s that they might be making a comeback i was listening to the serious xm channel called lithium the other okay. day okay. which is like very like 90s grunge and like it it one of the the people talking or one of the little like kind of like advertisements or whatever between the songs for the radio station was like for people that have a fading tribal tattoo <laughs> and i like just thinking about how I, even if you don't get tattoos based on what's popular they're, they're like the style of tattoos does change that, yeah that like what's in vogue you know oh, yeah. so like eventually like it it you know, pr pr having like a full, you know, Japanese or Sailor Jerry style sleeve at some point will probably date you to like, oh, you got that in 2016. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So well, it's, and 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 the, the stick and poke stuff and the kind of random party tat look like will date you to the 2020s eventually, I'm sure. Oh, it will. Yeah, it definitely will. I could see tattoos just being I could see like three years from now, I could see people just not never getting tattoos. Yeah. Um. Are we are we are we going through ends? I think we're going through ends first. We go, yeah, let's go through the yeah. ends first. All right, uh, I'm gonna pop over. I'm gonna go location based. I'm gonna go a little travel. Love here. it. Yeah, the Swiss Alps. You seen Alps content? I'm seeing so much Alps content combined with one of my favorite shows of this year so far, Mr. and Mrs. Smith yep. on Amazon Prime, which is just absolute vibes. No spoilers. Um, I'm not done. I'm not either. I love it. I'm, I love I'm, it though. But I, I think the most recent episode that I watched was the one where they're in the Alps. In the Alps, yeah. skiing. Uh, a couple of influencers that I follow, uh, one, well, one's a, one's a model slash influencer and her husband is a, um, is a photographer, it's Carrie Wheeler and his wife, who I only know is her Instagram name, which is well, well, thy belly, wealthy, wealthy, wealthy belly. I'm not sure what, it, how <laughs> you're supposed to say it. Uh, but they, they're just, they are dumping absolute like hot fire alps content right now i don't think italy's out but i feel like pe no people are wanting to travel to europe to go to other places that are not the italian coast yeah portugal yeah and and, and i will also i'll just throw in like like uh you know when i've talked to friends that are that are kind of like that have kids and and are doing uh, yearly ski trips again like they're they're just constantly complaining about the price and like one of the one of the things that everybody loves to say right now because it's it is true is that 
it is it is much cheaper to go ski in the Swiss, Swiss it, Alps. It, it's, is it like the Taylor Swift stuff where it's cheaper yes. to go to see her concert in Brazil no. than it is to go in New York? You have to get there, and it's a much longer flight, and you're dealing with jet lag. And so the, obviously there are a bunch of other hurdles that 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 probably even out the playing field. But the fact is the 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 like the European ski look, I, it's just it's just better than. Well, yeah, than like sick. Colorado and Rockies now. It's like, awesome. Right? Like there's no, guess what nobody is doing in the Swiss Alps? Wearing a Tony Romo jersey over their, <laughs> o, over their, over their, like their ski parka. You know what I mean? Like. <laughs> I saw a lot of CJ Stroud jerseys when we were in Breckenridge. Like there's, ju there's just, there's something that's a little bit more old world about it. Yeah. As you might expect. Pookie and Europe. Jet are over in Italy right now. Uh, are they really? Yeah, they well, just they just uh, they just launched their Italy trip okay. uh, on Instagram about an hour ago. I, the the the, num the number of people I, I don't know what's happening with Italy. I I honestly don't like the the number of people that are going to Italy uh, this year is is absolutely staggering. Uh, I'm lumped in that that group of people. Yeah, I can't uh, wait. Yeah, I mean, I mean that that that's they're going for a reason. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, and I'm I fear that reason is Instagram. So, uh yeah, I'm uh, the the Swiss Alps are qu are quickly rushing to the top of my list. I think that they are very in. I think that I think that Switzerland, I think that Geneva in spring and summer, you might see some you might be seeing some content from around those parts uh when the weather warms up a little bit, but the I, I Switzerland hot right now. I'm in. Ski season, I'll go. Swiss Alps. Nice vibe. Go watch Mr. and Mrs. Smith. <sighs> It's such a good show. Yeah. It's got the vibes off the chart. But I mean, they're, yeah. I'm not going to spend much time on this because we already talked to pants a little bit, but saying skinny jeans are back with no intention of wearing skinny jeans. No one's saying they're like back, back, but like I feel like it's on people's radars and I'm like, you're not, you're never going to do this. Like this is not something you will be partaking in. People are just saying it because they don't want to wear baggy pants. I think they don't, yeah, I think they don't want to wear baggy pants. And I also think that that now that we are, now that the pendulum has swung all the way back and everybody's more online than ever and fashion has more, more like is getting more coverage than ever. It feels like I, I think people, I think I mean, you're going to see this in, in a lot of different places, but people are just rushing to, to quote unquote, be ahead of the curve again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so it's, it's, yeah, it's the circle of life it, from the, uh, Blackbird spy plane thing today. Right. Just seeing that column today, I was like, this is, this is very opportune. So like, yeah, you gotta, you, you, um, that they're, you're you're way too early. You're going to be waiting to get into the skinny pants club for like another four years at the minimum. I put on some of my does not it does not it doesn't swing that 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 fast. You know, like takes takes years. So I, I put on some pants the other day that I hadn't worn in probably two years, and they are much slimmer fitting than the stuff I've been wearing lately. And I looked at myself in the mirror and was just like, no, yeah, right, I, no, I don't want to do this. I don't want these on. I had to go pivot and wear a pair of pants that was baggier that I'd never wear anymore because I don't like them very much. But I was like, it's just more comfortable. I feel better looking down at my feet. Um, I have 80s mob feeling dinner spots. I feel like this was started. What's uh, what's that Italian restaurant that everyone goes to in New York? Carbone. Carbone. I feel like it was started with Carbone making like Italian food, like Instagramable again. And now it's just people wanting to go to like, not like hole in the wall spots, but it's almost like the dive bar version of a restaurant. Like it's more fun to go to places that are like, it's the, it's the red, it's the red light aesthetic. It's the uh -huh. dark and moody mm -hmm. stuff. It's all that. I just feel like people want to go to dinners that feel more haunty than they feel um, are like the Instagram clean aesthetic, like that we all had from 2000, what, 12 yeah, to I feel, 2019. I, I feel that. I feel that. You're, uh, you, I, I mean, Austin, you know, lords of, of the, uh, of the food and beverage industry, MML, they can do both. They can you know do both. I mean? they, they can do both. Get you a man that can do both. Mm -hmm. uh, get you a get you a restaurant group that can do both. But it's like the old school martini glasses. Like the, mm -hmm. it's just like those little tiny touches that make you feel like you're somewhere that has history behind it, as opposed to just like the the new like the the most popular new like restaurant in town. That's like some high end Miami feeling place. I feel like that people yeah. aren't going to gravitate towards that as much as some more homey feeling place these days. And I'm very in, in line with that. I think that, and I think that honestly, I think the I think the vibe and the the spot, the style of restaurant that you're describing, kind of fits in with the dressing nice. Yeah, thing, it's like, doesn't it? Yeah, it's like wanting to be old money or feel old money yeah, without like actually being it. 
it's like it kind of just makes you feel like you're like something something uh, this feels a little bit more worn in feels like it, it's maybe it's been there for a while it's got a little bit of a patina on it mm -hmm. and like when i think of like the kind of like very bright white clean clean aesthetic of of some, some of the restaurants that that we probably have in our mind right now the sure you could dress nice to those places but the vibe that i'm thinking about like the look that i'm thinking of is a little bit more like leans a little bit more towards like a matching sweatsuit yeah. Which I'm not saying I'm out on. I'm just saying that's I do, the that I would love to do a matching sweatsuit right? to an Italian restaurant so. soon. Hey, well, I'm yeah, gonna make it a track suit and then and then then you'll fit in at the uh at the at the mob spot as exactly. well. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I told us that we couldn't get to 40 minutes with only doing one ad read because I know we get long winded on yeah, this. We so do. We do. before we do anything, <laughs> I want to talk about our friends over at Green Chef. You can elevate your everyday wellness with the number one meal kit for clean eating and discover new gut-friendly recipes each week. Green Chef's new gut and brain health meal options include mouthwatering array of nutritious dinners, clean snacks, and functional drinks crafted to actively support the well-being of your gut and enhance cognitive health. You know I'm a kombucha boy. I love my gut health. I'm always worried about that kind of stuff. And now I can enjoy nutrient-dense, science-backed gut and brain health recipes developed in partnerships with registered dietitians that improve digestion. They reduce bloat as well as boost everyday energy and immunity. I've gotten so much Green Chef in the mail, and it's always a very, very welcome package. What you get is just all the stuff, and it feels like you went to the store. It arrives. It looks great. Um, the stuff's in paper bags. It literally feels like you went to the store, and all the produce is always so fresh that it's honestly shocking to me that it's been like <laughs> sent to me. It's incredible. You can choose up from over 80-plus flavor-packed options, including their calorie-smart recipes and wellness bundles every week. Um, and you can just build healthy habits with the easy way. I'll say this. As somebody who uh, just had a second child, uh, we were ordering in a lot, and this stuff has saved me. Yeah. Like it makes it so much easier to just do everything, and especially with I. I mean, I don't want to say that I have dietary restrictions because they're self-imposed, but even doing like a Mediterranean diet or a pescatarian diet, they can mix and match anything for you. And it, just, it it's much like you're cooking, but it's much faster than a regular cook. Yes, because everything's ready to go for you. It takes a lot of the prep work out of it. Um, but you're still using fresh ingredients, making yourself a home cooked meal. And so it's, it's, that's, it's really nice when you need to save a little yeah. time. You're not taking all your green onions and shoving them back into a bag and then letting exactly, them go bad exactly. over the time. Perfect, you're putting every portion. single thing yeah. in that pot yep. and you're making a good meal. Go to greenchef.com slash 60 scaries and use code 60 scaries to get 60% off plus 20% off of your next two months. Again, that's greenchef.com slash 60 scaries using code 60 scaries to get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. Green Chef, number one meal kit for eating well. Let's dip back in. What else you got? Uh, well, I mean, you know, on the heels of Green Chef, I'm going, I'm going to my food, uh, my, 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 uh, my food entries here. I'll start with one that is, that, that I think I've talked about on the pod already, uh, but is, is very personal to me. So, but, but I'm, I'm going to explain it. It's plant-based cooking. Um, I, I joked. I think I, I think I told this story on the podcast. But my, the the treat that I arrived to when I was after I was gone from my three day bachelor party <laughs> is that uh, that Laura had watched a documentary on Netflix. Okay, and the one about the twins. If that, I'm sure that rings a bell to, to some listeners out there. And uh, basically oh, I watched the trailer for this. Had declared that we were now vegans. Love it. <laughs> Love it. We are vegan now. We're vegan now. Oh my, what? What? Are you, you know, very, so. <laughs> We we uh we backpedaled a little bit and we're just we are now trying to like our our cooking at home that we do I mentioned that we do a lot we're trying to do almost entirely plant based cooking at home then when we go out it's kind of like whatever we'll 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 get so we're not trying to be vegans we are just trying to not, not basically not buy meat for ourselves at home and what? and do a lot more plant based and or plant forward cooking at home yeah so that's the, that that's the first thing and then while I was um. At the at the uh, San Cristobal in Todos Santos, uh, we, we ate at their new restaurant called C Cosecha, and then we also ate at one of Todos Santos's like more well renowned restaurants called uh, Jazzamango. And like my favorite dishes from both of those place places, the ones that like really just kind of like 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 blew my 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 taste buds away, were plant based. Yeah, and I, yeah. I think about how a few years ago now, like Eleven Madison Park, the basically the 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 best restaurant in America, and then Noma, widely considered the best restaurant in the world, like are are fully plant based now. And the the reason that they said that they were doing that, or at least for for Eleven Madison Park, is because they were basically like meat is a cheat code. 
If, if you really want to prove that you are an amazing yeah. chef, cook like do it with plants. I kind of love it. And and like you you just get, especially with like Mexican food. You know, like people joke about how like like if you go to Matt's Matt's, Matt's El Rancho, right? Everything is basically the same ingredients. Yeah, just fixed in a different way. So it all kind of tastes the same. Well, like once you start doing like a dish that's just like cauliflower and cactus and pepper and like much like that tastes different. Yeah. That is where you get like the differentiations and, and some stuff that can really take you to a different level. So I feel like more p- people are doing this and, and going this direction as our restaurants. I'm seeing a lot more plant plant-based stuff on menus. Um, and I, and, and, and if you're willing to explore it, I think that, that you can f- find some stuff that tastes new. So that that's why I have it on here. That was the most fun part of doing pescatarian. I did it pretty much. I would say if I, a- I actually had to put a number on it, I think I was pescatarian about 95% of the time between January of last year and October. I really didn't break very much. Yeah. And when I did, I made sure it was like uh, for like one or two meals on the same day. And I barely, I barely broke. Um, it allowed me to explore the menus and realize how many good vegetable dishes there are right. places. Yep. Yep. Um, but also just in talking about that with friends and stuff, and so many people said, oh yeah, we've definitely made an effort to stop making meat around the like our place. We don't make red meat at our place hardly ever. If we're getting burgers, we go out and get it. We don't make steak at home, blah, blah, blah. And like the amount of people that identified with that and said it, I also think a lot of people said it to me just to like say they did, and I don't actually believe that they <laughs> acted like that. But they're, 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 it was just a very... That was the most common reaction. Like, yeah, we've yeah. been trying to cut out that too. And and I'm going through a huge meat phase right now. Like I'm leaning into it. I'm enjoying meat and I'm eating a ton of it, probably too much. Uh, but I know that it's probably like, I'll this will buck me and I'll go back to not eating meat for a while. Yeah. And I, l- l- I also, I'll caveat, like, like, like I said, when we're out, we, we still order meat stuff. And I, I had an amazing burger on the trip, like amazing beef, beef quesadilla and beef taco type stuff. So it's, it's. Not saying that I'm out on meat either. It's just that I, I have really found like my my favorite stuff right now. Like the stuff that is kind of kind of blowing my mind is 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 happens to be plant based. So, well, I don't have anything. Uh, I don't have anything too food driven outside of people just talking about replacing espresso martinis with cotahillos. Even though I don't see people actually doing it in practice, <laughs> it's making me annoyed. Uh, I've been trying to get people on the cotahillo train for a while now. Yeah, uh, I was. I was. I learned about them probably 2017, 2018. Okay, and I've and Sally and I always joked about getting them because it was kind of a bit with some of her friends that we'd get them. And now they're actually like, I mean, they're all over Instagram if you're like, sure. uh, if you're in the cocktail algorithm and I feel like people are trying to replace it, but I also don't have faith that if I went to any restaurant in Austin right now and I said, I'll do a Carajillo, like, and if I explain to them liquor 43, I don't think I'm going to get it every single time. And mm. so I need more people to put their money where their mouth is and stop talking about it and start being about start it. Start being about it. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't, I like the idea of replacing these. It's fun. Okay. Uh, I I need a I need to put a little bit of pressure on myself and actually order a a, a carajillo. They're delightful because I'm 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 one of these people that like maybe I'll talk about it like oh yeah that sounds good I'm 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 interested to try something that's maybe a little bit less going like l- like not going to get me quite as turnt right yeah you know mm-hmm. but then I then I'm there and I'm just like yeah give me that. Give me that I've espresso never, martini, it's, baby. it's very rare to see someone not partake in a round of espresso <laughs> martinis intentionally. No one has ever turned it down and been like, no, I'm good. Yeah. I'm fine. I'm fine. That's a hard trend to kill, man. They're it good. Is. They're it, good. It's a hard trend to kill. It's a really fun thing to do to close out the meal. I think uh, ATS Cocina has them. I had them with Brett one time. They're delicious. Yeah. Got it, got they're so you. good. Yeah. They're so yeah. good. Try it. And like force your local restaurant to get Liquor 43 if they haven't already. Just do it. Just do it. Well, here's where here's where I've included your like a like a, a version of of yours from from the end of the year. You okay. had analog on your in yes. uh, on your in list. I, I have dialed that in a little bit further, and you, and you we did talk about film, but to go even further now, Polaroids and disposable cameras. Mm-hmm. Like like, I'm th- these are everywhere. Uh, there were I like I, I have very few photos on my phone from our little mini moon. Because I was carrying around with me a, a disposable camera as well as like a Polaroid Instax. And I was much more invested it's fun. in getting the shots from those cameras. And like now I've started to get I I, I got the uh I got the the um the disposable developed and like the look is just so fun. You're getting this more analog vintage film look. Uh there were multiple other people at the hotel that were also carrying around disposables. Mm-hmm. Um my, my my old friend who's like a kind of a 
well-known interior designer, Claire Zinnaker, like I, she, I have seen on her Instagram that she's been walking around with a Polaroid camera. Like, so this is just, this is definitely, uh, I think, I think that it was, it was really kind of like popping off. I know that Brett has been, uh, Brett, Brett at Wash Media has been doing the disposable thing on trips that he's been going on mm -hmm. for, for a little while now. And, uh, and I'm just kind of like latching onto it, but it's fun. And I don't, I don't think this will slow down in 2024. Like I, I, th I, th I think that this idea of capturing stuff on film, especially these very accessible, easy ones like Polaroids and disposables will, will continue to, uh, to be a thing. I've got film arriving at my place today for our trip tomorrow. Can't yeah. wait to do it. I actually, I, I'm, I, I'm going to the masters this year. I'm going to a practice round on the Tuesday and I'm really excited to bring a film cam. You can bring a film camera out there and take photos. And like, I am legitimately so excited to like take a camera out and yeah. take pictures of Augusta National Golf Course. It's just going to be so much fun for me. That will be very cool. I'm, I, I can't wait. Um, I have reading on here. We know that people are just the boys are it, reading, it, dude. It's, yeah, it's huge. Or it's just huge. pretending. No, actually, I, I wish I would have put like pretend reading or <laughs> pretending to read because I think both qualify here. <laughs> Just get some books in your life. Right. Yeah. Uh, my, my final one was, uh, I, is saying we love when you're talking about yourself. Just instead of saying like, oh, I like that. Like, oh, we, we are loving that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, I feel like it's catching on with people that I hang out with and people are like, they're massaging it into their uh, That probably isms. means it's almost over though. Yeah, probably. You we're we're all Because I do feel like this is like, I, 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 this is one of those ones that I'm sure like started with Gen Z's, but now all the millennial yeah. reels makers and TikTokers yeah. are saying it. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it, it, this you might find this on your out list after the end of the summer. I think one of the most satisfying <laughs> things is having something on your in list and then getting to put it on your out list later. Um, the last thing on mine is is another food one. It's just pastry content. Uh, and I, like, I cannot tap that heart button fast enough when either like a somebody making a dessert or doing yeah. a dessert recipe comes across my feed or or just somebody like posting like an amazing looking like just like lay, like flaky layers l perfect lamination croissants cinnamon rolls like it, what whatever you got out there now and I I am everybody knows this about me but I'm a, I'm a certified pastry boy I love pastries mm -hmm. um it's my favorite thing about like the weekends is like going and getting coffee and and dialing up a queen of mon at, at a Swedish hill or something like that. Um, but I, like, I just like, give me more of it, you know, like, do you like, follow y'all post your pastries out there, man. Do you follow breath.france on Instagram? I'm, I don't think I do. I think you should. Okay. Uh, they do a game where they will find a French person and they have just their perfect French accent and they say they pretty much play either or. And so they'll say croissant or, uh, what, I don't know. What's a pastry? I don't eat many pastries. Or they'll say like croissant or scone. Okay, croissant. Okay. Then they'll keep going until they finally land on the final one. And it's for some reason the most satisfying content seeing <laughs> French people choose their favorite pastries. It is just a delight. <laughs> uh, but it, this is bref.france? B-R-E-F dot France. Okay. But it seems like they do. The, is it always pastries? No, but okay. the pastry ones, I think the pastry ones mostly, hit, they hit my timeline. I think they're more popular than okay. some of the other yeah, ones. Yeah, and so I think yeah. I see them more. Okay. Um, but it's, I'll check this out. It's pretty satisfying. It's a great account I, and they might collab post with other people. I don't know if that's the actual account, but you can find the stuff there. Right. But yeah, I have a ton. It's, I, I think just naturally having the Sunday scaries account gives me a lot of pastry stuff anyway, yeah, yeah. but I do see a lot of it. Is it time to get hateful on some outs? Yeah. Let's go with our outs. Let's, uh, let's just start salting everybody. Y'all got to stop putting songs on your Instagram carousels. <laughs> this is not, this is, this is Instagram here. Okay. That, like if I'm not in reels, I don't want audio. I don't want to be in public and suddenly have some song blasting because you decided to put up like a, a carousel from your vacation. It, it's jarring. I don't like it. It's chuggy. Stop it. This is, but it's, this is a, this is huge. This it's is a, huge. It's a pandemic. I, I mean, it, yeah, yeah. And <clears throat> I mean. You're probably gonna have to apologize to Laura, who just posted for the first time on Instagram in forever, to post a first round of wedding photos and definitely did this. Nope, I'm adding everybody. <laughs> no one is safe. Stop putting songs on it. It scares me. I don't like it. It interrupts my Spotify. I don't. I I I wonder how this happened though. MySpace. My yeah. I, I don't know. It it's like. I feel like somebody somewhere figured out that it juiced your post on on the algorithm. It probably does. It probably does. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So if you put on some trending, if you put on some trending uh, audio, I'm sure it helps you a little bit. It's right. It's kind of like a hack to get the trending audio without having to make a reel almost. Um, you, yeah. You, if you want to use audio, make a reel. Be a real came, one. This came out of nowhere though. Um, okay. 
while we're doing our, our most outrageous hottest takes here, I've got, I've got one for you. Jeremy Allen White's fits. You're out. Yeah. This, I, I, and I look, I won't lie to you. I'll listen I, to this. I will listen to this. I, I was, you know, the, the, they, they sucked me in at first. I, what, first of all, I don't know how this guy is on everybody's algorithm all the time right now. Do you think he's hiring? Do you think they're hi- did, I, Are they, they hired paps? They, I don't know. They're doing something. They're, they're he, speaking of who has juice on the algorithm. He definitely does. Can, can and, I speak totally out of school on something right yes. now? Like, wasn't he going through a divorce or something? And I saw some messy headlines about it. And I feel like ever since then, the only things I see about him are bear updates and him carrying flowers at farmer's markets. That, I'm not saying they're connected, but I'm just saying like, I, you could convince me they're covering up something, but he also seems like a pretty chill dude. I don't his, really know anything his, about him. His love life has definitely been part of his, his kind of explosion here on the algo. He did break up with his wife. Who they have, and they have a small child, and they down, he dated some models and stuff, and now he's like with Rosalia, I think. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So he's, I mean, he's out there, he's making moves. Yeah. Yeah. Um, look, I, I get why people are drawn to his look, and the first thing that I will say is that I, his vibe is good. I like the jaw vibe. He is, he is a little messy. He's a little dirty. He's constantly smoking a cigarette. Speaking of people with cool tattoo tattoos, he's got them. He's a tat guy. But the the fits are are not like you know. This is not how I want to look. I think I think you've pulled the wool off of my eyes. Like if you cover up his face in these outfits, and no, I, and so no. I, and I think that's what people. But I think what what people are catching on to and why people are are suddenly gassing this up so much is because they are so approachable. Yeah, like they are so rumpled. It, 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 he is just pulling stuff, random stuff, out of the laundry basket, tossing them on over like a shredded white tank top mm-hmm. but like all all of his white sneakers they're all cooked yeah all cooked. they look like shit i don't like any of his shoes yeah the shoes are not great uh, he he like sags a little too much can like, we can we at least put some respect on putting the tulips in the Bodie bag like just put a little respect on him for using the for repurposing his Bodie bag the the Bodie bag is the be- the best piece about that fit <laughs> it, it it actually it really the, is uh, his hat looks like it smells the, the 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 nasty ass Mets hat that he keeps wearing, like it, it's it's just very it's fine. It's is what it is. But like this the striped shirt, I liked it. It was too long for him. It is um, too long. It, for it, him. it accentuated that it needs he's to be a, cropped. That he's a short king. It needs to be cropped um, a little bit. It should have been a little bit more. I cropped, like the raw hem on the jeans. Uh, yeah, that it's. But it's I'm fine. not in love. I'm not in love with it on this. I, like in the in the iteration. Um, I like again. I appreciate the vibe. It's not that his clothes are bad or that the fits are bad. I'm just, I've been surprised at how much love they've been getting. Like, he, like, like he's some new like style icon. He's because, a baby like, girl, dude. Pull him, pull, pull up the fits of, of Austin Butler or Jacob Elordi or Paul Mescal or. Oh, don't even get me started on Austin um, Butler. Or, or even like it's, it's, or, you know, let me include my, my short, my fellow short Kings out there too. But like Tom Holland, Timothy Chalamet, like these guys get fits off too. You don't have to be tall and statuesque to do it. I just, I think he like. I, I don't know. It's it's fine. They're fine. They just they're they're not like the hottest fits in the world. And I I feel like I'm taking I feel like Mugatu taking crazy pills over here. You can say anything you want about Austin Butler, but I'm going to parlay that straight into my number two out, and that's ALO hats or ALO hats, whatever it's called. Uh, ALO. Yeah, I yeah. fucking hate these things. <laughs> I recently went to a concert, and before the concert, I went to a bar. It was the first time I had been to a bar in downtown Austin. Uh, on a Friday or Saturday night in a really, really long time. So I really hadn't been amongst the uh, young crowd in a long time. (laughs) The amount of dudes who were wearing generic ALO hats just made me sick. I was like, guys, you're all showing up to the bar wearing the exact same hat. Why are you doing this? Now we got Austin Butler like training for some movie shooting things and he's wearing an ALO hat. I just don't get it. Like, I don't actually think that you're shopping there. I think you just see that like dudes are wearing the hat and then you go buy one and you don't even like wear the other clothing. Are you sure that Austin Butler was wearing one? Did maybe did I see a Photoshop of it and it wasn't? I don't know. I can't I can't find it, but but um but maybe it wasn't uh tagged as such, you know what I mean? Yeah, let me see. I just typed in Austin Butler. No, it wasn't one. I think I saw the throwing fits Photoshop. I think it was a Photoshop that I saw. Oh, okay. Yeah, they photoshopped okay, okay. an ALO. But it's so bad. And I'm glad that they've honed in on making fun of it because I was shocked. The table behind us had six dudes at it. Four of them had ALO hats wow. on. And I was just like, why? Like, this is so not cool. Like, it's just not cool to wear the same thing 
a, if you're wearing the same like jacket as one of your friends, that's kind of a coincidence in my eyes. If you're wearing the same hat, that just shows me that you guys latched onto something and you didn't have like your own individual take on it, especially if it's a hat from a brand like that. Do you think that is that is the is Aloe trucker hat guy and Gordon Brothers trucker hat guy, are these the same guy? Are they connected? Are they different? I think they can roll in the same crew and coexist, but I don't think it's the same guy. Okay. I think it might be the guy that considers himself like, like this guy doesn't, this guy doesn't, he doesn't golf with the other guys on the weekend. The Aloe hat guy? Or no, the, the Aloe hat guy's playing golf on the weekend. Okay. Okay. Yeah. This yeah, guy's yeah. like, this guy's day drinking and meeting up with them after their golf round. Okay. Are you familiar with melon hats? Uh, this sounds really familiar. Okay, this is this is another um, this is another golf guy thing, but like you know, like cool younger golf guy who, who's down with spending ninety dollars on a performance hat. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So let's get to where's one like that. There's one. There's the like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not into it. I don't, uh, I'm not a hat guy though. You also true, have to true. you have to take my word about hats with a grain of salt because I really don't wear a hat unless I'm playing golf. Or I'm at a pool. I, I, I think you're right. I think you're right about the difference between the Goran brothers and the aloe hat guy. I think aloe hat guy and melon hat guy are definitely the same. Yeah, and, they're, and they're the same. This, it's the it's the brand of like younger bro. That, yeah, that it's very bro -y. It's very bro -y. That definitely loves golf and um, yeah. Just that, go get a Unisphere hat like right. everybody else, dude. Yeah. <laughs> He's probably, well, I think aloe hat guy is like one step away from discovering, exactly. is one to, from discovering ALD. He's on his way. He's yeah. one girlfriend away from her being like, you need to stop wearing this, wear this. And like suddenly he's dressing. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. 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 That's, uh, a, that's, a, that's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> he's one, he's one step away. Um, I, I'll use that to segue. I always like to include something about sports here. Um, out professional golf. Yeah. It stinks. Ma yeah. Masters. I'm going, I'm giving a pass because they've right currently, as it stands now, they have figured out a way to bring the best players together to play a round of golf. Um, which is what the fans want. So please, for the love of God, somebody somewhere figure this shit out because both are awful. When right the now. golf guys are out, both of, are awful. All the golf guys in my life are out on watching professional golf. Like it's, it's not good. The, and this it's is, not this good. is terrible for me because my my wife, uh, which I now get to say, um, like the one sport that she is like very cool with me having on is golf. It's eye rolls on every other sport that I'm trying to watch. Golf is golf gets the pass. She's not a Stroud boy. She's not no no. She's not she's not a Stroud boy. <laughs> <laughs> um and. Like a few weeks ago, I, can, I don't remember which tournament it was on, but like when she can look at the leaderboard and be like, who are these? Yeah, guys? it's not good. That's not, that's not good. It's not good. Like she, she knows the names and the names are not on the board mm -hmm. and th that's, that's bad. And I'm not going to watch live golf. By the way, John Rom, just because you can wear shorts now does not mean that you should. There's some guys I that just should not be doing seeing it. The, like, I, look, I, I'm, 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 I'm. It's too far. We're too far into the pants thing on profession for professional golfers. I don't want to see your. It's your still caps. jarring. It's, it's still jarring. jarring. I really don't want to see it. Just wear the pants. You look much. Kind of want to see Phil's. Phil's got good calves, though. You know, it's hard. Uh, end of rant. It's just a. It's a travesty because, like, I I could honestly see professional golf kind of like dying out here in a way. Yeah. Like 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 the way that you. Do you I, most of our listeners probably don't know this. You know, boxing was like a huge sport that everybody paid attention yeah. to in the eighties and nineties. It was crazy. Yeah. And now, yeah. And then, and then they, this basically happened to boxing where like they fractured the three different belts and like different people were like, nah, we're the professional league. Yeah. So you had to like win all the belts. And then there was matches that unified and it just became like a bunch of bullshit and everybody stopped caring. And that I'm worried that that is happening here. This is not a sports podcast, but I, I, I feel like golf is is a very relevant sport to retail therapy. Yeah. And uh it stinks what's happening to it because it's becoming unwatchable. I do I do think that there's like there, there's been a renewed interest in the actual game playing of golf. And I, I hope that that keeps on going up and that the the lack of professional the lack of engaging professional golf, I hope that doesn't stop people from playing because I yeah. did love the fact that the pandemic did get a lot of people out there. It's just great. And yeah, but it's never been a worse time to be a professional golf fan. It's yeah. just not something I care about. I hate your last one on here. What's your problem? <laughs> you want to talk about it? Yeah. Okay. I've got on my outlets vintage and thrifting. They're di in my eyes, these are two different things. So you're hating on two, th two different things in my eyes right now. Okay. But I'm not, I'm not, I can't ride that hard for this. But by, by and large, 
when uh, and here let me let me get it pulled up. But when GQ has latched on to a trend and does like a full Instagram carousel about it, like that that's one thing that alerts you to the fact that um it, it's very close to being over. And this is I like GQ, no no shots, but as a as an as a um what do you call it like a like a when like a heritage media com- mm-hmm. company like a, or a blue blood yeah like they they just they don't move as fast and so when when I when even GQ is posting how to thrift your way to victory yeah like and, why are they saying skip the tees uh like don't waste your time with vintage tees basically it's like you you're not going to find anything good if you're going to a vintage store no you're not but um, if you're willing to go online and pay two hundred dollars then yes you will so that's but that's another that's another piece of of what's wrong right now yeah is that this has become so popular mm-hmm. by the way it's all over my algorithm there's so many reels of people going like rifling through their local goodwill so many reels about like oh this is the best place to thrift and vent and vintage shop in your in blah 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 area like a bunch of fashion influencers are doing it um and so now like the vintage shops and the thrift stores like they, they're too curated the vintage shops are mm-hmm. so Going in, like you just you had your pair of camo pants that that you pulled up on eBay the yeah, other day, three hundred dollars, nearly three hundred dollars. So I just I I I again like oh. I'll I'll caveat this just by saying like I get the intention. I do think that vintage and thrifting is cool, but there but but we we've gone well past peak vintage and thrift now, and that 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 to the to the point where like I think people, especially young people, think that they can just buy a bunch of vintage stuff and put that all on and that's a look and that's not it's not a good one that's fair do you know what i mean yeah no the price inflation on it is like horrible it's ridiculous that people are paying so much money for things that are like secondhand that should not be that much that's not how this is supposed to work so i and and look i don't want to take away like 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 it's very easy for me to to you know i want to be careful with my words because obviously some people like like that that's how they can get new fun stuff is by going thrifting. I understand that. That that's and I'm all for that. But like those people are the ones that are probably being screwed the most. Yeah, they're probably by, getting priced out by like by fucking GQ talking about how to shop your how to thrift your way to victory at your yeah. local Goodwill. There's yeah, there's different types of thrifting. Like it depends on who you are. Like it depends on where you're going to and what you're doing. And a lot of places just don't have much. Like it's just not a fun thing. Probably because all the things that you'd want or that are engaging to you if you're interested in fashion are just going to be priced outrageously somewhere else. Yeah. I just started. I just got on Instagram to go to the GQ page to see what we're talking about. And the first things that popped up my Instagram where a girl revealing her new party tattoo and then I scrolled down <laughs> and it's uh, cannolis covered in caviar. Okay. We're not doing cannoli ca- and caviar. Like it sounds like we are. No, we're not. It's just <laughs> we're over caviaring and I think I had that on an in or out thing recently and it's yeah, just it, yeah. it's, it's too much. Uh, I'll add to the vintage thrifting thing too is like I still think it's big. It's, it's huge now because if you go to like Abercrombie and like PacSun Every single one of their new like T-shirt designs are vintage designs, but they're right. new yes. shirts. Yeah, yeah. that so pisses me like, off. Like I was in a vintage. I was in a vintage store the other day, and I found a Grateful Dead shirt. And because like I wanted Sally to have like a vintage thing for the sphere, I took a photo of it and sent it to her. Like, do you want this? It's a pretty good price. And then as I started looking into it more, yeah, the shirt was a- printed in 2019, right. and I was like, "Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, like yeah. It, it just it, like I'm not paying fifty dollars." For a shirt that was made in 2019 that was just worn to shit to make make it look like it's from the 80s. Yeah, yeah. It's the their new designs are just kind of diluting the market. It's yeah, really bad. It's, it's yeah, that, and that that's the real problem is that it's just oversaturated. Too many people are talking about it. Too many people are in on it, and it's just kind of like ruined the fun about yeah. about vintage and about thrifting. So yeah. I'm not like I, that. That's why I have it on my out list because I think it's just time to pull back from this and mm-hmm. kind of and let it cool off a little bit because sure. it's not fun right now. Fair. Um. Let's hear your last one. Common projects, these sneakers. Yeah. This is like, I'm not saying, I I don't dislike common projects sneakers. I actually really do like them. I think I, I, I refuse to pay the price for them. But I have heard the price is justified yeah, and yeah, how, like, yeah. they're great. But like in terms of that blank sneaker, I just think that it's not, it's not the fashion forward choice anymore. You're not going to be looked at as fashionable because you have a pair on. You're going to be looked like, you're going to, you're going to give fashionable if you're wearing a reflective pair of new balances or something like that. That's true. Um I do you know do you know who loves common projects right now? Who? Aloe hat guy. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and and like yeah, and yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that they, is exactly it. They 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 I think they still serve a purpose and 
kind of going to your your um your your saying skinny jeans are coming back with no intention of wearing them. I almost feel like common projects are a little bit in that zone too right now because they've they, like you know, super fashion forward people have kind of been poo-pooing the low profile slim kind of like quote unquote dress sneaker for a while now. Um that I I honestly could see them coming back a little bit more as a, a, to to tie it one more time and did like the dressing nice thing. Uh, I, I think that dressing nice means a, a shoe or a boot or a lace up or a loafer or a, some type of slipper or something like that. That's what it means to me right now. But, it, but eventually I definitely could see that morphing back to kind of like bring in common projects again. Yeah. And I think common projects is so, um, stripped down in terms of like style that it can pair well with a lot of things. It can't, yeah. It but can't, I just don't, can't. if you're trying to be fashion forward, your money is better spent somewhere else. And I do agree with that. It's not, they are not the most fashion forward choice at yeah. this point. Yeah, but I, I'm not going to criticize someone for wearing them because yeah. I still think they have a place. My biggest issue with Common Projects is that I want them to, like, they need to make more black sneakers with a gum sole. Like mm -hmm, they, mm -hmm. I don't like the black sneaker with the black sole. It, right. it just, it's, it's as someone who worked in restaurants for a while, it's just very restauranty. It feels like you're a server and I don't want to look like that when I'm out on the town. And so it's like, I'd rather, I, I just wish they would, I wish they'd do a little bit more, but I also understand that their entire ethos is kind of doing a little bit less and that's okay. But like I said, like if you're going to, if you want to spend money on a pair of sneakers that is going to m hopefully make people turn their head the common projects aren't going to move the needle as much anymore as some other sneakers are, true. whether you like them or not. And unfortunately for me, I can't, I don't see myself wearing the sneakers that are currently like the hottest sneakers. And so I, I almost feel like I'd be more in the common projects lane, but I also am not the coolest person at all times. So it does not matter. Yeah. Um, that's a great segue into to one of my other outs, which is Nike. Um, I'm a huge Nike loyalist. I still shop at Nike. They are my go-to gym brand for the most part as well. Um, but, uh, and, and, and I'm not breaking any news here. Uh, there was a, a, a business of fashion article released in February, um, titled how Nike ran off course. Uh, I think at the end of 2023, they had to slash 1600 jobs, the stock, cr the stock price crash. They announced $2 billion in cuts, yada, yada. More more than that, I actually haven't even read the, this entire article, so I, I might be just repeating stuff that's in it. But I don't understand, and this is almost like this is not that Nike is out and Adidas is in for me, or Nike is out and 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 Asics is in right now. Like it's not, I'm not even like it's not an either or. Yeah, it's not really like an either or. It's that I don't understand how a company like Nike doesn't learn to adapt more. Or, or I don't, I don't understand how they don't see the th what's happening in the market quicker than it seems like they do. Are they too big to move quickly? M maybe, but I, but, but so, so learn how to do it. Like that's like, why do you like Abercrombie and Zara and these, the, these places that are able to respond to trends so quickly, but in a way that is st like where there's still like a, 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 a value there and a quality there, like that's, that's why they're successful and popular. And, and, and I don't understand, like. But the, what I'm thinking about here is what, what over the course of like 2022 and 2023, as like a as like the Air Jordan One was very clearly had had peaked, yeah. was falling off, and they just kept releasing new colors. Every month there was a new color. Meanwhile, at GQ since 2021 has been writing every summer about how the Samba is the shoe of the summer. <laughs> yes, like it's 2024 now, and Nike doesn't have a response. Nike does not have a, 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 a Samba competitor. Yeah, they don't. I mean, like... It, like, how is that possible? But they've never had a Samba competitor. Like, I don't know. Like, they're... You're the Nike, Samba you for can't me make is one? A, it's like a kick-around shoe, whereas, like, they've always been... I feel like they've always been known for, like, the statement shoes that they have as opposed to, like, they're more... Yeah. Like, Nike, Adidas has always had Sambas and Stan Smiths that kind of cover this, like, basics gam... Like, this basics, like, everything. Whereas Nike, for me, if I, if I bought a pair of Nikes, it was probably going to be a shoe that was a little more, like... Not like I was afraid to get them a little dirtier, but I also I don't wear a lot of I don't wear a ton of sneakers. Yeah, yeah, I, and I'm not loyal. I get called out all the time for having the uh, the Adidas symbol on my side or and like and, and Nike's on or yeah. vice versa. <laughs> and like I get why people don't like that. I don't I don't think about that just because I'm not really in that game. But it's it's hard for me to weigh in because I simply don't pay attention to sneakers enough these days. Yeah, especially like Nike sneakers and Adidas and stuff. It's not something I truly like care about at this point because I, I've played that game before. I've been in the sneakers app. I've been doing that kind of stuff, and right. I, I don't like what it turns me into. 
suddenly I'm trying, I'm like looking at resale stuff for Yeezys that I never needed in the first place. Yeah. Um, well, I don't think that the, that the sneakers app is doing all that hot right now. Yeah. I don't and think it, so either. And that's, and, and, and that's kind of what it boils down to is I'm just surprised. And I get like the development process for sneakers is, 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 is long. I'm sure it takes a, it's much harder to design a new pair of sneakers than it is to design a new t-shirt. But like, you know, you, you, you're worth billions of dollars and y'all, you can't figure out like a certain team who's, whose job it is to be nimble and fast and bring stuff to market. I, it just, it's always surprising to me, you know, when, when these companies kind of like trade places or give up market share that they just, that they didn't see some stuff coming because like the general public could have told you that. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I, I so. just, every time I go to Nike.com or Adidas.com, I leave thinking like, how did I not find something I right, wanted? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. how can I go there willing to spend money on, and I'll go back to the golf stuff, like willing to spend money on golf shoes and leave the site feeling like there are no good looking golf shoes in the world. Like, yeah. it's just wild to me that it doesn't work in a, in a fast manner. Well, I know we're, we're, we're running up on time here. The last thing that I have on my outs, Will, is daylight savings. Time. I'm, I, if, if there was a vote to get rid of daylight savings time, I would I would go vote against it. This is more of a so I this is almost more of a PSA for everybody because I think people get this confused. You what you you want regular time. You do not want permanent daylight savings time. That that it's it's bad. You're still it's if you go permanent daylight savings time, you are going to be waking up at some point o- over the like. It's bad for your mornings, and it, the the sunset is not that much different. Okay. Like people, why, people like daylight savings time because we get sun till 9 p.m. during the summer, right? Yeah. We don't need sun till 9 p.m. during the summer. No. 8 p.m. isn't good enough for you people? Yeah, I'm fine with that. That's that, It's fine. Like, I just don't want to switch uh, the clocks ever. Don't we, make me switch exactly, clocks it, ever. Okay, yes. And I, I that's first and foremost, we, we got to stop. We got to stop. We are a civilized society. Daylight savings time is the, the spring forward is approaching us. It fucks everybody. It, it's terrible for everybody. And we do, and we don't need it. The sun is already not setting until like six forty here in early March. We're we're, we're going to be at eight p.m. by by May June. Like it's fine. Like we like just let's just stay. Let's just get it done. I, I I'm tired of falling back and springing forward. Barrett, I want to take this even further, and this is probably my Will's half baked idea of the episode. I want there to be a world clock. I don't understand why we need to be on different time zones. Like just make a world clock and just everyone's on the same time. But you just sleep at different hours. Yes. Yeah. Like you just operate on a different schedule. <laughs> oh, those Americans, they're always asleep from this time to this time. And so, uh, we'll eventually okay. learn. Like we don't have to go through. If I'm looking at a flight, I yeah. don't need to be like, hold on, how many hours different? Okay. 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 And th- figure that out. I don't need to look. If I look at a UK website with some soccer stuff on there, mm-hmm. oh, this game starts at 1630. I don't know what the fuck that means in terms of my <laughs> stuff. Not only do I have to translate it from army time, I have to go back and figure it. Like, okay. It's just, okay. no, I don't want to yeah. do this. Yeah. Give me a, give me a world clock. Every, put everyone on the same level, and we can sort it out later. Okay. No time zones this is, anymore. This is interesting. This is never an interesting again idea. do we have to sit there scheduling a meeting for a Zoom and be uh-huh, like, "Oh, uh-huh. I'm good at this time Central Time. Are you like Pacific yeah, yeah, Time? Yeah, yeah. Whatever. Like, no. Let's like just. Uh, I feel like there is a reason I'm not thinking of yes, that. That won't work. But, it definitely I, but is. I, I like that you're thinking outside the box. I think Will. it's because uh, the way the Earth rotates and a day starts differently at like the other side of the world. Yeah, that's why I like Japan is in a new year. Like many hours before well, right us. but ser- theoretically oh, okay yeah, yeah, yeah i see what you're saying so yeah. it's like their their whole calendar would get messed nope. up on I new guess. year's on new year's eve we all celebrate <laughs> the exact same time and the world glitches out because everyone's using all the power that we need it's just uh, a different deal randy i feel like you were going to say something I, I, you, I i personally prefer us being in daylight time because permanent it's, daylight it's more time, of, time it's not the summer it's later it's the winter that the Sounds, like when it's four four o'clock and the sun is already set, like that's the part to me. But that's okay, nice. but especially in like the Midwest, it's I, really yeah, cool. yeah, the Midwest it, it, it breaks we, your spirit. Yeah, our our perspective here in Texas is definitely different. But like, I guess my point is that uh, on it is that like in the winter, in the dead of winter, is the sun setting at five thirty any better than like it setting at four thirty? Really? Like, well, a little bit. <laughs> when you're at work and you go to work yeah. and it's just pitch black. No, Randy's making a good work point. And it's pitch black. Like, leaving, oh, I didn't see the sun today. Leaving work at five o'clock and having it be pitch black outside in the middle of winter time in the Midwest is one of the most depressing things you can do. 
Uh, there's arguments for keeping each time. I just fully agree with you that we should get rid of. Yeah, I, I, time I will like you know if I if I was out there and in, in on Cap Hill, right? Like I, I would let the lobbyists sway me either way. That it just let's didn't, just get just get let's just get the votes and stop. Didn't Jonah that. promise this? In Veep? I think it passed in. Yeah. Either- well, yes, and and in- at one point, either the House or the Senate lit- unanimously passed something to get to stop Let's this. Let's ride. And then they just yeah. never put it on. I they like may- never put it on the floor. May- I think maybe like the House passed it, and then Congress or yeah, so, or, yeah the, the other Senate one just never yeah. even put it on the floor. Something like yeah. That. So, um, hey, Congress, get something done. How about Figure that? it out. You Figure it out. A bunch of jabronis. Hey, Barrett, if you don't have a if you don't have a wish list item, now is your cue to find one. Okay. <laughs> because today's wish list items are presented by our friends over at Early Bird CBD. Ooh. Big fan of these guys. The other night, uh, I had a little pain in my my shoulders. Uh, my son was crawling on me all morning, and I just wasn't feeling great. And I was like, you know what? I'd love to sink into my bed right now, really get my relax on. I'm going to go take an early bird. I did something bad, boy. I took two early birds because wow. I knew that I was Are down Are you allowed bad. to do that? You're allowed to do that. Okay. If you're not familiar with them, it's around two and a half milligrams of t- natural THC and around 12 and a half milligrams of CBD in each gummy that you're formulated for fun and to make you feel good. It doesn't make you feel like you're out of your mind going crazy like you can feel like with some edibles that you buy at a gas station. Not these ones. These things are about two and a half milligrams each. And it's just great. It makes you feel like you're uh, whether I mean, there's different use cases for it. For me, it was I wanted to relax. I know Randy takes them before a night out and I respect the hell out of that. I'll take them before a night wow, out every boy, once in a while. Randy. Yep. He's crazy. Go check these guys out. These guys are uh, a local Austin company. Uh, I've seen their company start from really start to now. It's been a great experience. And I just love these things. Anytime we recommend them to somebody, they always want more. Get 20% off your first purchase with promo code WIX at earlybirdcbd.com. Again, that's promo code WIX, W-I-C-K-S, at earlybirdcbd.com for 20% off. That is a one-time use code. So if you are going to do it, load the cart because you're going to want to go back for more. So get numerous bottles or even get some sample packs if you're feeling wild. Do you have any wish list items for me, Barrett? Okay, yeah. Um, here's my wish list item for today. Quick story. Uh, uh, back back in 2015 way, maybe 16, we were very bullish on a brand uh, that has come up on this podcast numerous times called Outdoor Voices. Yes. I did not expect Outdoor Voices to. They, I, they, I, I could have had them. I could have expected them to come up on this episode in a different manner than this. Well, just just wait. Okay. Now, um, we're not to the wish list item yet. Okay. They, they had a pair of shorts called the Sunday Shorts. Yep. Which were uh, amazing. Like they're like a stretchy kind of, but kind of thick knit material. They're like not a gym short, but they're not a sweat short. And I have got like four pairs of them. And they're like my, they've, they, for, for years now, for the better part of a decade, they've been like my go-to like house short slash I'm running out for go to the dog park short slash do everything. And I saw a picture of me wearing them, um, the other day. <laughs> and the, the fact of the matter is they're too big. They're too big now. They're too long. I feel like I, it, the, you know, uh, call back to, to the Jeremy Allen white shirt. I feel like they're making me look, look, look short. Look it's short. seven and a half inch inseam. And they're like seven and a half or eight inch inseam. Yeah. And I just, I need a little more leg showing. I've, th- I've legitimately thought about getting mine shortened. And I, so I've thought about that as well. That seems like a lot of work, but I've, I, I've, and I've looked for alternatives because I don't think, uh, OV does not make the Sunday short anymore. I don't believe. And even if they did, they, I don't think they shorten the inseam on them. So I, I was, do, I was searching again this week because this, this, this happened to me recently where I saw these photos of myself and I was like, I, I got to stop wearing these. And so I think that I have identified, I think that Lululemon is now doing something comparable. This is the soft Jersey short. Okay. They make it in five inch, which I'd like to try first. I need a different color on the screen but, but, and I need a close up of the material, but also a set, but also a seven inch. Oh yeah. And I, the, 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 the blend is like a poly el- elastic or a poly spandex, which I believe is what, um, is what the, the Sunday shorts wore product features. Let's see. So let's, uh, here we go. Fabric. Uh, what are we dealing with here? I don't know. I have some shorts from Lulu that are much, they're not as Sunday shorty feeling. They are more of a athletic like i would actually wear them to go work out in right but they are this like stretchy kind of material that does have the same vibe as the sunday short material okay and i i went through a period of wearing them all the time and they simply fall into the back of my drawer and they're just not at the top of the rotation right now but it's a very comparable short that is 
it's it's a five inch inseam, so they're short boys. I mean, they are they're riding up there. Do, is it the bowline? Do you think it's the bowline short? No, I I do have those as well. Okay. Those are more like techie, like you could spill water on yourself and like brush them off. I feel like yeah, yeah. No, I forget what these are called. Okay, I I don't even think they sell them anymore because I went back to get more and they weren't there. Well. These do look like a good comp. I'm off to check these out very, very soon um, because that's that that that's just at the top of my list right now. I get because I wear I seriously I wear I wear Sunday shorts all the time. Like they really are like a go to like I. It's too hot here too often to like have sweat shorts as your go to. Yeah, that that would be the best. Like I like the versatility and like casual slash sporty nature of those, but they don't really work starting about now when it's 90 degrees in March. Um, but yeah, I got I got I got to get something shorter. So this is. This is at this is at the top of my list. I, to, to I try. had sweat shorts on the other day, and will flame me for them. They were, they're not. Your sweat shorts are very revealing, Randy. <laughs> 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 You're short. Sure, they're are very you, short. Are you are you are you slut shaming, Randy? Right no, now? You slut shaming. No. <laughs> I got some five inch uh, Fabletics shorts recently too. I really like those. Okay. I need but pro- but, the, but Fabletics, they're probably more like sporty, athletic. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's 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 what's hard is finding a short that's not a sweat short, but not like a full on like gym short. I've been wearing a pair of shorts from a company called Cadets. Have you seen these no, guys? Uh-uh. They're called Cadets. Um, they they actually reached out to me because they make uh, shorts for uh, like toddlers, and they were like, "We'd love to send you some shorts for your son." And I was like, "Absolutely, let's do it." And I saw that they had this nice terry cloth interior on them and they just looked really kind of nice and comfortable. And they have a built-in liner, which I know some people don't like, some people do. I actually prefer it sometimes if it's not too tight. And I bought them and they've been they've been my go-to lounge around the house short. They're very short. They're like five inches or maybe like, I think they're five inches. Um, Cadets, okay. But they have a, like the terry cloth inside immediately turns them away from being a like workout short for mm-hmm, me to mm-hmm. being a straight up lounge short. And they like, they have a good swimsuit. They have, it's, I don't want to say it's like the most fashion forward. It's kind of like, it, they do feel a little daddy to me, but when you're chilling around the house, yeah, standards are low for uh, being fashion forward, you sure. know, but those have been my go-to for chilling shorts as of late. Yeah. And if listeners out there have any, any, any alts, like I'm all, I'm all ears. There's a, there's a Buck Mason pair that, that looks cool. But again, like I know, like it says in the description that they're like water repellent. And like I'm trying to get comfy on the couch. In yeah, these you, don't too, want to, you, know? you don't want. You don't want. If you move on the couch, you don't want noise. Yeah, right. Yeah, there you go. Yep. It's like oh yeah yeah. Uh, I I don't know what the opposite of an imminent cop is, but that's what I have today. What do you have? I do not have a cop that is imminent. This is a cop that's like a get the bag. Um, I'm I'm going to upgrade myself, and I'm going to go with uh, what I talked about earlier. I want a new pair of loafers. I want a new pair of non-black loafers. And I honestly want to go Belgian with it again. They've raised the price since I got mine, so it's much more difficult. It's much tougher to swallow. But I love them, and I want to get another pair that I can wear around, and I can make them much more casual, and I can I can, I can, can massage them into my normal routine without feeling like I'm ruining something I love, which is my black pair. Now, what, so what is what, what are these going to be? The Mr. Casuals? I'm, I'm going to go. I like the Mr. Casual. Um, I got a rubber sole put on the bottom of mine after wearing them for way too long. You're supposed to do it after like, I think like two months or something. You go get the rubber sole put on. Uh, but since I did that, it feels like I have a brand new shoe. Like the structure of it just feels really good. They cleaned them up for me. It's just, they they last a long time and I want to get a brown pair because I feel like brown would just go well with a lot of the things that I currently wear. My issue is that they always, all the shoes on Belgian have black piping on the brown pairs. Yeah. And I don't love it. Mm-hmm, I wish mm-hmm. they would just do a brown one. And that would really change my urgency. If they did like a drop of shoes, which they're not going to do, that was like not the black piping, I'd be more into it. Mm-hmm. I don't want to go with the Del Toro route because I think I would I think I would always wish that I had splurged yeah, that, for these. Yeah, yeah. Even though Del Toro does do the more like just all brown or all right. whatever. Uh but it's these are owning real estate in my head simply because I love mine so much. But again, this is not an imminent cop in, in any sort of the word. So I don't know if this will happen. It's more just hoping that maybe my wife will see this on the wish list around Christmas time, go to my closet, go in my Belgian shoes bag, look at the size, uh-huh. and be like, okay, uh-huh. I'm gonna do this again. I'm gonna do this. <laughs> so again. Wh- so which ones are like closest to what you want though? The Mr. Casual. Okay, so if you click the in Mr. there, okay, all right. If you click in the Mr. Casual, they've got uh, the the calf is probably the most classic one that you see everyone doing. And I think that's probably what I would do just because I think the lack of texture on the the shoe kind of makes it a little less um, uh, 
like head turning a little bit. Okay. And so they have like ostrich. They have like a a, a, a lizard print, like imprint yeah. stamping um, and those kind of things. But they're all kind of glossy and sheeny. And I really want to wear these things down. I want these to look like they're my dad's beat up old loafers that I can. Uh... So you're thinking like dark brown cap? Yeah, I like. I do yeah. like these. And do those have the black piping? I mean, yeah. it's, it's, less it's less noticeable on the dark brown. Right, right, right. Okay. And so right. yeah, I think those would probably be my toward the top of the list of the choices. Yeah. But I again, I don't see this happening for a very long time. But I'm a, I'm a boy can dream. How about boy these? Can dream. The, the, these are the ones you want to be wearing at the uh, '80s mafia Italian restaurant. That's for sure. I yeah. want Barry Keoghan to see me wearing these and be that, like, "Where'd you uh, get those?" He, he owns these. Actually. Yeah. He probably. Yeah. He, yeah. De- he definitely has these. Yeah. 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 Well, Randy, you oh, got man. some shopping to do because uh, we've been. There's been rumors flying around that the Ame Leon doorbell is not the only thing in the studio anymore. <laughs> <laughs> okay, give me a. Give me your credit card. I'll buy it. There's rumors of a. Uh, there's rumors of a. Uh, a baby girl gong. Uh, the, ba- the BGG. Some, the BGG. The BGG. I could get one for fifteen dollars on Amazon. All right. Wow. Wow. Sign me up. Just, I'll purchase it after this episode. Sign me up. I might get one for just for my crib. Do you know who I? I actually, speaking of baby girls, I don't know if he qualifies yet or if he ever will. You know, he's he's kind of a. a, a he's not quite the same like like type of guy Mm -hmm. but one of the dudes that i was thinking about when i was thinking about my whole dressing dressing nice thing is uh is glenn powell yeah face of brioni um he's having a good run right now and and he his approval rating's high he dresses in a very like tailored way like a lot of like polos that fit him really well um almost always wearing like lace-up shoes or like a boot of some sort and like a trouser like very rarely do you see him like looking like 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 he is walking in Soho and might be featured on Nolita Dirtbag next week. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So um, you know, he's 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 not an Alordi or a or a Mezcal or a Kogan, but he's there's something about I don't know, he's he's kind of like bringing back something for me a little bit. I get it. I get so, it. Outside yeah. like no, I want to think of some older baby girl men that are like not like in their mid twenties. Mm. Outside of that Sienna Miller stuff with like Jude Law, like Jude Law's a love. He's like a generally loved person. I think his 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 general appearance in the holiday always kind of bumps him up to people, and he starts getting yeah. praised online. But I also feel like some people hate him. I, well, I, yeah, I think in his heyday, like he was not universally well. No, I don't think he was either. <laughs> <laughs> he may have cheated on with the nanny. I think he did cheat on. Okay. He, he cheated with Sienna Miller with, with the nanny, the nanny yeah. with the nanny, yeah. which is that, just an all time bonehead move. I think that eliminates you from baby girl. That's understandable. Or if you are a baby girl and you do that, you get kicked out in baby girl court. You're out. <laughs> you're you're, yes. you're out. Get out of here. <laughs> which uh, sadly was not one of the sketches on on SNL. No, we didn't even get to yeah, SNL talk. Yeah. Um, we'll we can do it soon. We'll do it soon. We'll do it soon. Yeah. I've got some thoughts on SNL. I'll holster them for another podcast. Yeah, put, I want I want to talk SNL yeah. as well. It's All been right. a, it's been a top everyone's feet a lot lately. I guess we'll see you guys next week. Bye bye.